Hello, and today we are going to learn how to write our first blog post. So you've already created your WordPress, your WordPress blog, um, and you have that up and running with things like uh, widgets and a customized header, and you've chosen a specific theme. Now it's time to write your first blog post, and this is how you do it. So we're logged into our WordPress account here, and we're in the dashboard. Uh, now what we're going to do is just, um, you'll notice over here in your main menu, there's something called publish right underneath that blog posts. You're going to hit this button that says add. And what it does is it generates for you a blank blog post that we're now going to fill out. So, uh, the first thing you need to do is to create a title. Um, and you need to create some kind of a title in there, even if you don't know what your blog post is really going to be called and you want to go back later and change the title, that's totally fine. But in this particular instance, um, you do need to create some kind of a title so that it can save it in your drafts for you. So we're going to do a blog post about Hello Kitty Socks because, whoops, oh goodness. We're going to do a blog post about Hello Kitty socks because our blog is about socks and how awesome socks are. So all you have to do is type whatever your uh, the title of your post is and then just put your mouse down in the main writing part of your blog. And so now it will it's going to it's saved it for you now. What you'll see is it's automatically saving your draft as you go along. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to write our blog post. So um, I'm just going to write a couple of things. Again, we're just doing this as an example. It's not a real thing, um, although I'm sure somewhere out there there is a blog dedicated to socks. Um, it just won't be me writing it. Okay, so I've written a quick little short blog post. Yours should actually be longer than this. We'll talk about optimal sizes for blog posts in a bit. Um, so I've written just a little blog post. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you what each, how to use each one of these formatting buttons to make your blog post look um, pretty and to make it look professional. Okay. First of all, this is how you add media and I'm going to get into that one in actually a, a, a different video a little further down the line. Next up, this is going to give you options for um, uh, formatting your text. So what you can do, for example, is highlight something and then you can come up here and you can click on the heading and now it's created a heading in uh, a heading in that with those words that you wrote. You can also make slightly smaller headings um, and they go all the way down to five or you can just leave it, leave it as it is as a paragraph. Okay, there's advantages to this in terms of search engine optimization, which I'll get into a bit later. Next up, let's say you have some words that you want to highlight. So I want to highlight Hello Kitty sock. Actually, I'm just going to highlight Hello Kitty. So you highlight the word and then you come up here and you hit the B button and now that word is bolded. Um, similar for um, I, which will make it be italics, or if you want to go up here, you can turn off the bold and then it will just be italic. Okay. These next two buttons are for lists. So what you would do is you would write a list. You would create a list and then what you do is you would highlight that list and then come up here and just hit the bullet button and it will create a bulleted list out of that. Exactly the same with the numbered list. You just hit that and it creates a numbered list for you. This is how to insert a link and I'm going to cover that a little bit further because links are incredibly important when it comes to blogging. This is something called block quote and basically what block quote does is it creates um, a, a quote out of anything that you have in the middle of your blog post. So what you can do is you can highlight a paragraph just like this, and then you hit the block quote button. And what it does is, as you can see, it really makes that paragraph stand out above all the other paragraphs. So if you have a paragraph that you really, really want to emphasize, or for example, if you're interviewing someone and they have contributed like a paragraph of information to your post, that's what you want to do is you want to use the block quote format. I'm just going to turn that off because we don't need it. 
Um, these ones are your justifications. So that will keep it on the left. This will center your text and this will put it on the right. Most of the time, obviously you're gonna use the left. You may sometimes use the centering um, section. Now this is for something called the read more option. And basically what read more does is, what you would do is you would, if you had quite a long post, and again, you're not. this is not something you need to do. This is very much something that's like up to you to decide if you wanna do it or not. Um, if you have a long post, what you would do is you would say take the first couple of paragraphs and then you would insert the read more tag. And then how that would look when people are looking at your blog post, all they would be able to see is the first couple of paragraphs and then they would see a link that would see read more. It's really a choice as to whether you allow your readers to see the entire post all at once or if you just allow them to see the first couple of paragraphs and then have to click on the read more tag. Uh, it's really a personal choice up to you. There may be some advantages for search engine optimization. I haven't found those yet. Um, now, if you just hit this little ellipsis at the end of your first row of buttons, you'll find that you have an entire second row of buttons. What? More buttons. So, um, these are ones that you probably won't use quite as much. This is called the strike through. Um, strike through is an old blogging term that most people don't use anymore. So when blogging first started, um, basically if you made a mistake on your blog post, what you would do is you would um, use the strike through key to indicate that that was a word that you had written before but that you've now updated it and then you would write something, you would write the, the actual word beside it or you would write update and then write the, the appropriate word after that. Um, it's not something that we use very much in blogging anymore, and these days most people are using it as a way to um, denote irony. Um, so what they would do, for example, is they would say uh, something like, I am obsessed with socks, right? Oh. And what you would do is you would take this and then you would do a strike through on that so people can see that you've said, I'm obsessed with, but no, I don't really mean that kind of thing. So it's sort of like an ironic thing. Um, underline, again, uh, you just highlight a word and then you hit the underline on it. If you need that for, say, for example, book titles, although I often put book titles or titles of things in italics. Um, this is a horizontal line if you want to denote um, a change between uh, one part of your blog post and a second part of your blog post, you can put a horizontal line in there. This is full justification. Most people don't use that. Um, this is text color, so you can actually change the text color of your words if you like. Um, again, not probably something I would really encourage you to do, um, but it, it is there as an option if you need it. This is a paste as text tool, and basically what the paste as text tool allows you to do is it allows you to copy paste things from Microsoft Word. So if you prefer to write your draft in Microsoft Word, you can do that, or if someone is emailing you answers to questions, you can do that. Highlight those, click this, and then paste as text. And the reason why is because Microsoft Word especially, and email as well, is really bad with hidden, um, you know, uh, formatting that you it will drive you crazy. You'll be like, why is that line there? How do I get that out? And it will drive you nuts. Whereas if you paste it as text, all that stuff will be scrubbed. Speaking of which, if you need to scrub, um, if you need to scrub out um, some formatting, one way of doing that is by tapping, highlighting the word, and then clicking on clear formatting, which is the little thing that looks like an eraser, and it will clear all the formatting from that word. This little omega is all your special characters. So if you need to, for example, write something in German and you need an umlaut, this is where you're gonna find all your umlauts. Um, if you're writing a French word and you need those little things that look like hats, um, there they are. Um, so that's where you'll find those. If you're doing recipes, you'll find things like quarter and half in there as well. These are to decrease and increase your indents. So if you want to have something that's tabbed out from the um, from the margin, you can use those and they will, they'll do that. And finally, the last thing, which is always incredibly important to know about is the undo button. <laughs> it's something we all need desperately. 
Now, the last thing that I want to show you, just because it's something important for you to know, is that up here you'll notice there are two tabs. There's visual and there's HTML. Most of the time you're going to be writing your blog posts in visual. It's sort of a WYSIWYG format. What you see is what you get. However, there may be times when you may need to go over and use the HTML tab. Those times will be when you need to use embed code to embed something in your blog post. And I'll show you how to do that in a 